It's called cornbread plant. Huh? True name is Valerianella, but everybody called it cornbread plant because you picked it and ate it with your cornbread. Hmm. Tommy Bass always ate it, and it's really good. It's a good mild green. Yeah, it's called cornbread plant or Valerianella. No relationship to the herb valerian, by the way. Eat it raw with your cornbread? No, you boil it. Make a green. Mess the greens out of it. And, you know, easy enough to do that and then just strip them off. Now, you say that's a lot of work, but yeah, no cable TV, you're poor, you're hungry. <laughs> Notice it comes up, bifurcates off, comes up, bifurcates off, comes up to the bloom, bifurcates off. You know, it's dead, dead giveaway. That's why it's a square again. stem. What kind of dog? Yellow dot or curly dot. Mm -hmm. It goes by both names because of curly leaves. When these turn brown, you can find big fields of these in places. Mm -hmm. When they turn brown, here's how you harvest this. It's really difficult. Mm -hmm. You're done. Pick out the big leaves. Throw it in, in a blender or a little coffee grinder. Make pancakes. Oh. Make pancakes, cookies. Oh bread. Oh, this is in flour. the family known as the buckwheat family. When you make your pancakes, you think you're eating buckwheat pancakes. I'll dig some. I got a bag of it in the truck I'm taking in South Carolina this weekend, and I'll show them what they look like brown. And that's it. You don't winnow the seeds out of the chaff. You use the chaff and the seed together, and it makes some of the best baked goods out there. So you dry it? You have yeah. to dry it? No, because this is green right now. You wouldn't pick it. Oh, okay. In you want to wait two or three dry. weeks, these will turn brown. You'll see fields, see fields of these all nice and brown. They're done. Just don't pick them early in the morning when the dew's on them. Just wait till you know, late morning, early afternoon, and just walk out there and scoop. This many people here, if we pick the fields of it, you could pick enough to feed everybody, your family, your friends right here. Wow. That in probably wow. 10, 15 minutes. It's that good, no processing other than grinding it down, and that's it. In fact, the, I did a class this last year where I forgot to bring my blend, my Vitamix with me, so I couldn't grind them, so I just used them whole, and they still made great pancakes, they just had a little bit more of a crunchy texture. Excellent. There's also broadleaf dock, which has a wide leaf, similar, somewhat similar leaf flower or uh, seed structure. And that's where people in books will say, you've got to winnow the seeds out or the chaff is bitter. That's because they're picking that instead by mistake. And it's a bitter dock, also called bitter dock. Other than that, just strip them off. Swine flu. Everybody's scared to death. They're talking about what happens if we have to shut school down and all this stuff. But now swine flu is just considered a seasonal flu. It, more people died of the regular flu that year than died of swine flu. What was the drug of choice treatment? Don't say sweet gum. Tamiflu. Tamiflu is an example of an herbal medicine that they put a pharmaceutical prescription trade name on it and charge you out the wazoo for it. It's made from a plant called star anise, as in the licorice flavored pod that you know, looks like a star with little red seeds in it. And it contains a chemical called shikimic acid. S-H-I-K-I-M-I-C and four provinces in China are the main places grown and two of them got hit by the earthquakes back then so that between that and, and Merck buying off all the stocks they could it was running in short supply and nowadays they're finding that there's some side effects with it and other issues but it's still the drug of choice treatment for flu well when I was first starting this, I went to Tommy Bass again one year, and I said, Tommy, what in the world do you do for the flu? I've got people I'm working with, and, you know, it's a flu's going around like crazy. And he said, why go get, he said, oh no, his words were, why boy, I got used to it back then, he said, go get you some sweet gum bark, make you a tea, and it'll kill it graveyard dead. I said, okay. Went out, did that, and it seemed like it reduced it by about four days. Tamiflu is rated at 1.3 days, by the way, which is still a lifetime if you got the flu, but the, this seemed to work as well or better. Well, about the time the swine flu broke out, some Chinese researchers came up and said, well, this one's been discovered in Switzerland. She 
chemic acid. And therefore, this can be used to treat the flu of the stichemic acid content. It's about 3.5% by volume of stichemic acid as opposed to 7% for star anise, but 35 is above the level that you actually even need. So it's got plenty of it. And the way you use it is in the summertime, you get the green balls, which are now perfect for stepping on at this stage. And the eyes will be closed, full of seeds. In fact, if you were to take the green pods, put them in a, a you know, regular old brown trash bag, you know, like see the grocery bag, three quarters of the way full, dry them, you'll end up with about just under half a gallon of seeds. I mean, they, you wouldn't think they're so full of seeds, but they are. And in that pod is are two seeds, fertile and infertile. You don't want to separate them out because they never did. Infertile seeds are the highest. Then the fertile seeds, then you just, or you can just take the green pods, mash them up, make a tincture where you pour drinking alcohol over them. Then the inner bark, then the leaves in that that order of use. If you don't want to go to all that trouble, go get some pine needles. They're high in chemic acid as well and vitamin C. Huh. Are you making a tea with that? You, said? you can make tea. See, Tommy never drank in his life. He was a tea totally. So he did the traditional southern thing of teas. Uh, now. This is to be used fine as a tea or as a tincture, which is alcohol based because it concentrates it, etc. etc. And we'll discuss that later. And you get a more of a medicinal effect that I like. I, it's, I think it works a little faster, but uh, either way. This is used in, in uh, Mexican cooking as a spice, by the way. Taste. Take a taste. Pass it around, take a taste. This is one that you use sparingly as a spice every once in a while. Because it can have some toxicity issues used long term, but nobody ever does it. That's fine as a spice. And this is actually a member of the bone set family, the Eupatorium. And in fact, it's botanical name is Eupatorium capifolium. And most bone sets tend to be very, very bitter. This is not. It actually has a nice flavor to it. It is a, another one of the real powerful respiratory antivirals, flus and colds as all the bone sets are. And it's interesting, and in, when you start looking at plants, some plant families have an affinity for certain diseases. They have chemicals that work on those. I would not use this, except as a last resort, for a, like the shingles virus. It's not what, it, what it's used for, but it works on the viruses that cause respiratory issues. Penicillin for res especially respiratory viruses. Really powerful for flus and colds. Remember the movie Contagion with Jude Law? Mm -hmm. Alright, he ran around with that pandemic going around saying the answer is honeysuckle. No, forsythia. <laughs> <laughs> Forsythia's the answer is the cure, then he died. The reason he didn't add the, the honeysuckle. If you go to Walmart and you buy airborne. Airborne, you throw off every ingredient in it but two. What would they do? Honeysuckle and forsythia. Mm. That's what keeps you from getting the, the viral and bacterial infections on the plant from the recirculated air. Use the blooms in traditional Chinese medicine in the fall, they use the, the, the leaves and the, the twigs, the young twigs at the, at the end of it. Um, in the fall? In say? the fall, that's when they use that. Rest of the time, use the flowers, and I prefer the flowers because those. And I don't know if I brought it or not. I brought some mead, but it may have been it may be chaga mead I brought. Um, honeysuckle makes really beautiful golden yellow mead. That's it's also a good medicine. What is mead? Mead is wine made with honey instead of sugar. Think Vikings. Use the flowers. Use the flowers. See, I've got my herb school. We I've got sort of uh, free labor. <coughs> So I made everybody pick about 15 gallons of honeysuckle blossoms one day, and we boiled them and pressed them, boiled them and pressed them, and I made five gallons of meat that I'm going to share out with everybody. And any class. of the honeysuckles are edible? Of of these Japanese honeysuckle, the coral honeysuckles are used somewhat in a similar fashion, but not the same. But you want the any things the like Japanese? this, and you'll find some of these that'll get a lot of pink in the flower too, mm -hmm. but they're still Japanese, they're cultivars is all. But it makes really good meat, but it makes a good respiratory antiviral for flus and colds.
and it's called sow thistle because you would feed it to your sow pigs to make them produce more milk. It's a galactagog. So you can give it to uh, women too that are nursing and they're having trouble producing enough milk. It's another one that has a milky white sap that'll take off warts, moles, and skin cancers, but it's not really bitter. In fact, it's a good green to eat. You just have to trim off the little spiny edges. Just trim off the edges and cook it as a green, but see all the sap coming out of it? Mm -hmm. And that's good for warts. Warts, moles, skin cancers. Now those uh, cancer. spattered thistles that are out here in that field, is that the same? Short no, that... this is not even a thistle. Remember, common names, because it's got spiny leaves, oh, everybody yeah. called it a thistle. Yeah. It's not, it's a sonchus, S-O-N-C-H-U-S. What a galactagog does is it promotes the flow of fluids. So if you got dry sinuses, you can use a galactagog. Your wild mustard, grab a leaf and chew it. Or the seeds are even stronger. What do you call it? Wild, wild mustard. mustard. You got all the different cresses, the bitter cress, the winter cress, the wild rape, all of those. Good edible green. Take your seed pod and chew it if you get one. You can actually make you can actually make your own mustard with it. Think watercress is in the mustard family. And and if you taste it, that taste will tell you it's also what it's called a vesicant. That means it'll raise blood. So you can use it as a, like a mustard plaster. You can use it in the wild mustards. And, and this is smilax. Mm, smilax, also known as sawbriar. Also known as in the cowboy movies. Hey, belly up the bar, give me a sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. And the, the, if you make real root beer or real sarsaparilla drink, they're basically the same thing. Just they vary the recipes up a little bit, but it's still pretty much the same drink. Um, and the name sarsaparilla comes from the root of this, even though this is just one of the ingredients. This has a big knobby rhizome on it that if you know somebody that smokes a pipe, what's the ultimate pipe to smoke? A briar pipe out of Ireland. It's made out of saw briar where you get briar pipes. It's got a real hard rhizome, but it's carvable with a knife, holds the shape, and then fire hardens. The young tendrils like this are one of the finest spring greens you can get. Mm -hmm. Who's not eating it? Here, try that. You have to eat it raw and it's good, or take it, steam it with a little butter, salt, and pepper. Oh my God. Fine meal. If you can beat the deer to them, because they'll snip every one off that they can find. This one's covered in them. Um, the berries on these are good for a sore horse throat, just to suck on them. And there's like six or seven varieties here. Down this way, you can get out of the swamps and get those wait a minute vines, those black and red bamboo, they call it. And they grab and say, hey, wait a minute. Like, like that. And they're all Smilax. If you go to GNC or any health food store, you can buy tincture of Smilax. And tincture of Smilax is used by uh, bodybuilders to build muscle mass. Because what these do is they contain the precursors to steroids. But because of the precursors, the early molecules that make up natural steroids, they're not anabolic steroids, they don't hurt your liver. In fact, this is one of the better herbs for the liver out there. And, but they had that effect on men building muscle mass with women's breast tissue, so they're used in herbal bust enlargers. It's the second plant I go to after wild yam for somebody with IBS. Because what is the preventing symptom of IBS? Severe colicky pain, just knotted up intestines. And it's a histamine reaction, and it's, but it's an inflammatory process. This, as a tea, stops that histamine reaction. Red cast all out in the field. And you tell the difference is, you look at the, the leaves, they look like little spear points. Mm. You taste that. And it'll be, it'll be sour like the wood sorrel. Same, same acid. I like that. And if you find, it, like in South Georgia, South Alabama, mm -hmm. on the Gulf Coast, any of the old granny women that had a secret cancer salve mm -hmm. to take off skin cancers, okay. it was always in there because it ate the cancer off. It's also an aminagogue. These things will bring on a period. And, um... Great, just one thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're way past that, like, in a year, well, you know? Only if, only if it's Thanks. <laughs> and it also is really good for clearing out arterial plaque, arterial sclerosis. Wow. What's the name of it again? Sheep sorrel. 
Oh. And it's actually related to the yellow dog. They're both in the Rumex family, R-U-M-E-X. This is Rumex Acetacella versus Rumex Crispus.